recording. All right, so today's lesson is the kind of the same thing as the other day. So we're basically creating uh, three-dimensional shapes where the base of the three-dimensional shape is usually bounded by the axes or some other vertical and horizontal line. Um, and it's also bounded by a function. And so last week we looked at the cross sections of that three-dimensional shape as quadrilaterals, as like rectangle or square. Today we're gonna look at triangle and semicircle cross sections. So I wanna go over just the different formulas for uh, those things, for triangles and semicircles, as obvious as it may seem, right? But if you have any triangle, and that looks isosceles, but that wasn't the point, but we have, oh my goodness, we have a base and a height of that triangle, right? And so the area of the triangle is one half base times height, okay? simple enough, right? But if you have an, a right triangle or like a 45, 45, 90, so common types of triangles that you might see are the um, right isosceles triangle, which is a 45, 45, 90. And if we have that, if you remember back from geometry, uh, algebra two, I don't know, pre-calc, most likely geometry. If this is side length S, right, I'm just calling it S for side length, then we obviously know that this is as well because it's a 45, 45, 90, it's isosceles. Then this is S times root two. Right, and that works because you could use the Pythagorean theorem. You could say that, okay, my side length squared plus my side length squared equals my hypotenuse squared, right? And so if we added these together to find the hypotenuse, I would divide by two and then you could take the square root, um, which we'll look at today. The other type of triangle that you might see is the other special right triangle, which is a 30, 60, 90. And the way that this could be drawn is let's say you draw a 30, 60, 90. Too big. like this, okay? And this is your 60 degree and this is your 30 degree. The relationship between those side lengths is if this is the smallest, right? It is, because it's across from the 30 degree. Your hypotenuse is double that. And then your height, the other leg is S times root three. All right, who remembers this stuff from geometry? Does anyone remember seeing this? No idea. No? No. No? In okay. four or five years. Okay, so this is what I taught pre-calc this year. But if we were to extend this, right, I've created an isosceles triangle, or equilateral triangle, rather. So we're going to be looking at some of these things today. Um, but just so you know, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem. So like that's what works here. It's basically what's working here for the 30, 60, 90. We're going to also be looking at semicircles a little bit. So I'm going to erase this real quick. This 30, 60, 90 is important, an important idea. That's an S, not a 5. I'm trying to erase it to look more like an S. But the idea behind these two special right triangles is that they have relationships between the side lengths. So like this is an isosceles, right? If this is five, this is five, this would be five root two. 
over here, whatever your smallest side length is, which is obviously across the 30 degree angle, you double that to find the hypotenuse and you take the small side length and you multiply it by root three to get the longer leg. These are just relationships in this two special types of right triangles that we have. Um, we're also gonna be dealing with semicircles today, right? So if we have a semicircle, which is a half circle, well, if we wanna find the area of that half circle, excuse me, we just wanna take the um, half of the area of a circle, right? So the area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is gonna be half pi r squared. So that one's a little bit easier. But those are the two types of things we're mainly gonna be seeing today. So understanding how to find the area of a triangle when it's a special right triangle, it's still the same formula. They just have relationships between the side lengths then we'll also see one problem with the semicircle. Okay, let's move on to the first example in what I sent you. Um, it says we have the base of a solid S and the picture is drawn out and it's sideways on your sheet so you are able to make the three-dimensional cross sections here. So we have this nice, X, Y axes, and we have the line X plus Y equals one. That line is written in standard form. If you wanna solve it for Y, we'd get Y equals negative X plus one or one minus X. So we're gonna hit at this coordinate point and this coordinate point. And that's our line. And we're also bounded by the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, then it says the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are isosceles right triangles with the hypotenuse lying in the base. So, this took a minute for me to draw, but this is going to be the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle. It's going to be three-dimensional, so it's going to be coming off the sheet going to look like this. And that's my best drawing of a 45-45-90 triangle where this right here is the hypotenuse of that triangle. can draw another one. Okay, and we are going to extend those here and the idea is that it's going to create this nice three-dimensional shape. So since we're perpendicular to the x-axis, we want all of our functions and everything in terms of x. And then our limits of integration need to be the x values, um, which is gonna go from x is zero to x is one. So in order to find the volume overall, we are going to have to integrate from zero to one because that's on our x-axis of the area of each one of those triangles dx. So what we need to do is find the area of each one of those blue isosceles right triangles. So that's what we'll do down here. So I'm going to draw one of those triangles just like this. And I drew it in a slightly different way. So it's like <laughs> seated in a different way. All right, so let's take a look at the hypotenuse of that triangle. The hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be the y value. Our function is x plus y equals one. Well, we need to solve that for y in order to find this hypotenuse here, which is the height right here. And if we solve that for y, we'll have y equals one minus x. So this length right here goes up to our function, which is one minus x. 
Now, in order to find the area of this, I'll write this a little bit higher up so we'll have some more room. The area of that triangle is one half base times height, right? But what do we know about the base of this triangle and the height of this triangle? They change. They're one? Okay, they do change, you're right, depending on which, which it is, right? Ugh. But that's why it's made with a variable in it. What uh, do we know? Be they're equal. They're equal. Why do we know that this base and this height are equal? Because it's, it's isosceles. Right. Because it's isosceles, exactly. So I'm going to call this B for base, but I'm also going to call the height B for base because they're the same. Good job. But I'm not going to use H because I don't want it to be confused with hypotenuse. So the area <laughs> of this triangle is one half base times base or one half base squared. Again, it's still the area formula of a triangle, but it's this particular triangle is isosceles right. Okay, we need to find B in terms of X. Ideas on how we can find B. Man, uh, Divided by root two. What? Huh? Okay. Oh, root two, gotcha. Yes, we can divide it by root two. Smart I am. We can also just use the Pythagorean theorem if dividing it by root two is not clear as to why you're doing it. So that's what I'm gonna personally do. You'll get the same answer if you wanna do it the other way by dividing by root two. So I'm gonna just use the Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. So I'm gonna have base squared plus another b squared is one minus x squared. So it's two b squared is one minus x squared, dividing by two. Oops, I didn't mean to put the squared on the inside. Okay, then we take the square root of both sides. So B, we'll take the square root of the top, which is just one minus x. And we'll take the square root of the bottom, which is root two. Now here's the thing too, I wanna to plug in B squared. So I didn't really even need to solve for B. I have what B squared is already. So I'm just gonna plug in what B squared is in for this area formula. So if we plug that in for our area formula, we'll have one half times one minus X squared over two. So again, I didn't really even need to solve for B because we needed to plug in B squared. So this was kind of a moot point there. All right, when we simplify this, our A of X becomes one fourth. And then we want to square one minus X. So we'll have one minus X times itself. So we'll be left with one minus two X plus x squared when we multiply, foil it out, essentially. Okay, so now we have what a of x is. Now we can integrate. So we can plug that in. I'm gonna take this one fourth out front since it's really like we don't need it. So this is gonna be one fourth, the integral from zero to one of this guy right here, a of x. So one minus two X plus X squared DX. And then as always, the easiest part is the calculus because it's the most fun, so. Right. Or you could just plug it into your calculator. You could, but well, we're gonna do this part by hand because it's a good time. Speak Whatever you say, coach. <laughs> So we'll have x minus x squared plus one third x cubed, which we want to evaluate at one and then subtract at zero. But if we plug in zero, it's just going to be zero anyway. So we really just need to evaluate this at one. So when we evaluate this at one, we'll have one minus one plus one third which will end up being a fourth times a third, which is a 12. 
Yes. I love calculus. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that was sarcasm sometimes. All right. So really, these are definitely more challenging problems for sure. The mo more challenging part is the geometry behind it. So again, the cross section was perpendicular to the x axis and it was the hypotenuse. So I just redrew one of those triangles, like flipping it over so we could see it a little bit better. Could it? The could height, it, go ahead, what's up? Could you have one of the, one of the uh, sides, not necessarily the hypotenuse as the function? Like if the triangle was flipped. Um, side. I or, mean, if the question was written differently, sure. But the question is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cro yeah. Yeah, sure, it could be really anything. You would still use the Pythagorean theorem or the shortcut that I showed you from the start, like, which is essentially fast tracking the Pythagorean theorem. All right, questions? Questions, questions? Nope. Okay, let's look at the next one. We have an ellipse. Woo. Yay. A conic section, an ellipse. Okay. All right, I'm going to draw this again here. <laughs> How can you meet like one person? All right, so now it's drawn. And this ellipse is 4x squared plus 9y squared is 36. Cool. All right. So an oval, a stretched circle, basically. And this one says that, what's this one? Oh, this is the equilateral triangles. And we're now cross sections of the the y-axis, like perpendicular to the y-axis. So each one looks like this. So we have an infinite amount of them and they will connect to make our, uh, our, our 3D shape S. All right, so we need to explore A of X, right? Because again, our volume, and in this case, it'll be in terms of Y since we're perpendicular to the Y axis. Okay, now I wanna point something out that makes this problem a whole lot easier is the symmetry of the problem. Right, we could essentially say we could integrate from negative two up to two because we are integrating with respect to y, we need to have limits of integration on the y axis. But we could also just integrate from zero to two and double it. So that's an option if you have to do this by hand, which we are going to do this one by hand because I'll update you on your AP exam, but gonna you'll do some things by hand too I'll so yeah just gonna do my job as best I can we're gonna do this by hand today so anyway so our volume is again I'm going to just integrate from y is zero up to y is two and then double it because this volume on this upside of the x-axis is the same as the volume below it so we're just going to double the integral from zero to two instead, because integrating with at zero is easy or easier than having two non-zero limits of integration. So that's why we're doing it that way. 
All right. So let's figure out this, uh, this equilateral triangle here. All right. When we have an equilateral triangle, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. When you take the height of that equilateral triangle, you have just created a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. This length right here is going to be um, two times X. Let's see why that is. Look on your picture up here. This entire length right here, half of it is your X value. It's how far you go out on the X axis, basically, horizontally. And since the equilateral triangle is twice that, this entire thing is 2x. When we looked at the 30, 60, 90 from the get, the 30, 60, 90 triangles, whatever this small piece is, and in this case, it would just be x because it's only half of the entire bottom part of it, our height is root 3 times that value. So this height right here is going to be x times root 3. So we have the base and the height of our triangle. The base of this triangle is 2x. The height of the triangle is x times root 3. So if we want to write the area of this triangle, it's 1 half base times height. Why are we doing AX? You're right, it should be A of Y. Um, yeah, we'll change it to Y, sorry. So then do you have to change X too? So we're, it's technically, it's the X coordinate. So we want to solve this for X, right? Because we want X equals. You can kind of write it in either way. I'm looking at it as because it's an X coordinate, it's going to be in terms of Y because it's going to be solved for X up here. It's going to be X equals. So we could, I guess, write it as Y. Let's do that instead. I like that more. I can't erase this though. It's not letting me. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Either way, you want to write it is, is fine. Um, but let's solve this for X up here. Well, I liked right, I kind of liked it as X because it is technically an X coordinate. I don't mean to like go back and forth. It just depends on how you want to look at it, but we want to solve this for X up here. So solving this for X, we'll have 36 minus nine Y squared. Then we want to divide everything by four. Then we can take the square root. I'm actually going to go back to writing this as X. Sorry, CJ and everyone. Because it is technically an x-coordinate, we're solving it for x. OK. So if we want to solve this for x here, we can. But I want to point something out. When we're finding the area here, if we want to write this in, we can write it like this. So 
So we really don't need to just solve for x if we don't want to. We already have solved for x squared, which is fine. Um, so we can just plug this right in for x squared. So when we do that, we'll have root 3 over 2. And then I'm going to plug in for x squared here, which is this. So we'll have 36 minus 9y squared all over 4. So this is technically a of y, which is confusing at the start because it starts in terms of x, but we solved for x in terms of y. And we ended up getting in terms of y here. We can simplify this a little bit if you want. Um, so the best way to probably simplify this is if we look up here, we can factor out a 9. And so if we factor out a 9, and just multiply these two, we can get 4 minus y squared. If we factor a 9 out. All right. From here, that shows that our a of y is 9 root 3 over 8 times 4 minus y squared. Just multiplying through. So that is what we are going to integrate. And to keep it simple, we decided to only integrate from 0 up to 2 and double it, instead of going all the way from negative 2 up to 2, because of the symmetry of the problem and that zero is an easier value to do. So when we plug this in, we'll have two, I'm gonna move this out front because it's just a coefficient out in front and we only need to write the four minus y squared in here. So we will have two times nine root three, over 8 times the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus y squared dy. Okay, these can cancel, so this will just be a 4. All right, when we integrate, we'll have nine root three over four out front. Then when we integrate by hand, we'll have four y minus one third y cubed. We wanna integrate from zero to two. So again, that just means plugging in two because if we were to plug in zero, we'd get zero anyway and we don't need to really do that piece which is why that makes this simpler. So plugging in two will give us eight and then two cubed times a third is eight thirds. And then it's just algebra from this point, so 24 thirds minus 8 thirds is 16 thirds. And then we can do some cross simplification. So quiet. You guys ready for the next one? 
No. Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This one has a semicircle and no drawing, which is always fun. So if you want to use your calculator to see what y equals e to the negative x looks like, you can. But it's um it's an exponential function. So and it's just decay. Um, so it's go instead of like going upwards, it's just going down. So really, we're going from the y-axis to when x is one. And if we were to plug in zero to that, we'd have e to the zero, which is one. So that's where it's starting. And then where does our function end up, right? It's exponential decay, so it's like going down. If we were to plug in one to this function, if we plug in one, we'd have one over e which is like one over two point something. So it's just a number that's not quite zero, but also not quite one. So it's just going to like here. It looks something like that. So we're going from when X is zero to when X is one, because in this case we're perpendicular to the X axis and our cross section like bottom pieces are the bottom part of the semicircle. So, we draw those like in blue here, they look like this. These are easier to draw. And so on. So since we're perpendicular to the x-axis, our limits of integration will be in terms of x. So if we look at each one of these, that's our cross section. Let's figure out what the area of that is. Well, it's half a circle, so we know it's going to be half pi r squared. So we need to figure out what the heck the radius is. Ideas on how we can find the radius. It's the function. Okay. One Close. Half, like two. Half, it's one half of the function. Exactly. So if we look at this right here, the diameter of a, our semicircle is the height of our function, e to the negative x. It's the y value, e to the negative x. So the radius is only half that length. So our radius is a half of our function. So it's one half e to the negative x, or you just put it over two, doesn't matter. Which I'm gonna do. And then that gets squared. Cool. Okay, when we square that, I'm kind of running out of room. So when we square this two, it will become a four. And then I'm gonna multiply it by this two out front here. So I'm gonna be left with one eighth pi. And then when we square this piece right here, we're multiplying the exponents together, essentially. So it's gonna be e to the negative two x. Little exponent rules. Okay, so that is our A of X. That's the area of one cross section. To find the volume of our entire shape, we want to integrate with respect to X. So on our X axis, we're traveling from zero to one of A of X, which I'll just plug in. So it's one eighth pi e to the negative two X dx. So we can bring the one eighth pi out front and really only think about integrating e to the negative two x. I want you guys to think about what that would be if you take the antiderivative of e to the negative two x. Hint, it's a part of its own antiderivative.
Okay, would anyone like to share what they got for the this integral here? Or general antiderivative, rather? E to the negative 2x divided by negative 2. Nice. Okay, so we have to take into account that if we were to take this derivative, we'd have to end up multiplying by this negative 2 up here. So in our antiderivative, we have to divide by that negative 2. So if you take the derivative of this, it would be itself, and then chain rule times negative 2, which would cancel with this negative 1 half out in front. So we'd be left with that. Then we want to integrate from 0 to 1. This 1 eighth pi is just going to stay out front. We'll integrate or we'll evaluate at one rather. So we'll have negative one half e to the negative two when we plug in one. Then minus, we want to plug in at zero, e to the zero is just one. So it's going to be minus negative half. So to write the exact answer, like you could keep messing around with this if you want, but all I did was I also, to make this nicer, I also factored out um, a one half. So when you also factor out a one half along with this one eighth, you end up having a one sixteenth out in front and then a pi. And then I factored out that one half. So I was just left with negative e to the negative two plus one. And that's kind of like a cleaner way to write it. Probably the cleanest way is to write it as one minus this, but fine. Okay, one more. We'll go as far as we can in this one here. Actually, this one's very similar to number two. Here's what I want. Let's pick up with this one because we're not going to be able to get through the whole thing today and I don't want to go over. Let's pick up with number four because it's another equilateral one. Let's pick up with this one on Wednesday and then we'll get into the disks and washer method, which I'm also going to start on Wednesday and then I'll give you an assessment uh, to work on over the break. So I'll let you guys go a little bit early today. Questions? We okay? Yes, ma'am. Right. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Okay. Atta boy salutatorium. Gleberman, how do you feel? Does it feel does it feel pretty good? It feels good. Dang. <laughs> congrats. Yeah, congrats, Nate. Thank you. Congrats to all of you. I feel I feel so You survived PCP. Yeah, but like to end high school like this is just kind of like crappy. I don't know. Real shit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over, man. Guys, senior class meeting tomorrow, two o'clock with Mr. Grapes. Be there. Be there. Be square. Yeah, go to that because he. I know he wants to hear your input. I saw, him, I saw him. I saw him. Is class over now? Nate, yeah, class gonna is give over. A <laughs> All right, guys. So on the day you graduate, I'm gonna want to check. <laughs> It's for the gym, I promise. Not my car. Yeah, not a car or or my, my son's, son's tuition. Oh, I should my probably stop recording. <laughs> 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 it's okay. No one's gonna watch this anyway.